This is First Contact, Stories of the Call Center. Well, what's your take on that? What's the best way to provide adequate empathy training for agents? And especially since we just ended on agents being the ones that watch the most amount of videos, what's your take on that? Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, it, it can be, I think it's, it's really important. Uh, it's oftentimes overlooked. Uh, we don't always screen for people who have the best probability of being empathetic. And what I mean by that is uh, going back to what I said before about the best human raw material when did you take in to your center? You know, there you can do screening for personality traits as well as for communication style. And, um, you know, depending on what kind of sector you're in, that can be important. I mean, obviously, uh, it can change also from sector to sector. So if you're in the hospitality industry, uh, it's going to be different, perhaps, than if you are hiring somebody for um, tech support, right? Uh, those, you don't have to have the same necessarily uh, skills or approaches or personality type on the tech support side that you might want to have somebody have for the uh, hospitality and travel industry. So, um, you know, you can address it also on two levels. Uh, there's an adequate level and a sophisticated level in terms of that empathy training. Um, adequate training is what most centers do, and it teaches the agent more or less to recognize the issue and get a feel for the communication style and mental state of the customer, um, even though it's uh, not always expressed as well as it could be. Uh, and, and then you obviously leverage those insights to show some genuine empathy to the, for the customer. and. You know, here, if you have the right person there, it's not a put on. They're, they're genuine. They, people in customer service roles who are meant to be there are people who love to give that kind of service. So it's genuine for them. And that's good. Uh, you know, a sophisticated level of empathy can require more training in recognizing the personality type and the communication style of the, uh, the person that they're talking to and actually use that to either mirror or to guide the conversation in a way that's going to have the, the best outcome. So when we talk about empathy, though, and you had get some examples where it's more important potentially overall if you're going to paint a broad brush, and then other times where maybe there's other skills that are more important in that environment. But have you seen from an ongoing perspective, what is it that you have to do to make sure that people are actually being empathetic on calls? I mean, because obviously you're not listening to every call or how do people know that in situations where empathy is actually the thing that probably would have made a better outcome for that call was the thing that you were missing. Any insight into what you've seen or manage or teach or have people doing to be able to measure that or see that that's even happening post-training? Right. Oh, um, great question. And so one of the things that obviously helps out a lot is if you have post-call uh, surveys and uh, hopefully post-call surveys that are taken up by a reasonably uh, large percentage. I mean, large percentage, still a small percentage, but as many as possible uh, of the people who are uh, coming on the phone. And that way you can actually match your coaching to what the customer said, which is the most important thing. Um, mm -hmm. And what we've seen is the most sophisticated centers, Christian, have both very heavily relied on the customer satisfaction feedback, right? Um, and let me make one distinction too, if I can put in a parenthesis here. Sure. Use that for coaching purposes appropriately if you are doing small smaller samples if you're actually going to judge the agent on it for purposes of promotion and pay etc cetera, etc cetera, then you as a manager owe it to the uh to your agents to get a statistically significant sample over the course of a year to do that so if you're finding that you're going to use you know uh two a month for so 24 uh, at the end of the year, and then you're going to actually use that for promotion, and you know that's all you've done. That, that's not a statistical sample. You should not feel good about that as a manager. On the other hand, if you have a statistically valid sample, you know you've got two, three, 
hundred um, of these over the course of a year, then you know you can feel much better about using it for that purpose. I'll close that parenthesis and just go back to saying that um, the um, you know the, the 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 empathy training there is something that uh, can be done, as I said, for coaching purposes, even with small samples, and um, one of the things that will happen in some cases is that people will actually get good re response on their customer satisfaction, but the coach will still feel that they are not having the kind of inflection or empathy that they are looking for as part of the branding of the company. Okay? Mm -hmm. They want them to be even more so. And that's a tough one for the coach. And the best thing that can happen in those, one of the reasons we did these videos is because sometimes by saying, well, look, don't just listen to me, uh, you know, listen to this video, maybe that can convince you what you need to do in terms of uh, managing the call and managing the customer contact in a way that will be more fruitful.